Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, it's all about Microsoft. It's okay to like the M money. Money. It's okay to like Surface. And it's going to be really easy for you guys to get your apps on there. We'll find out how and all that and more. Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey guys, this is the Awesome Cast. It's Tuesday night. We're in the studio in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh PA. I'm Mike Sorg here. Uh, ready to talk nerd, talk tech, talk social media, talk online, talk all the things we think are cool going on out there from a uh, from a Steel City state of mind. Uh, with me on the couch back again, John Chichilla. What's up? Hey, and he's got he's got something else. To I got show I got a, I got. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But he's got that is he now that's not the RT that you've been in here with before. Nope, that's the that's pro. The pro. I will touch on that. You, I want to get your impressions on the service and definitely our other guest here uh, because it, this has been a minority. Do you want to introduce this fellow? So this is one of my friends from work, Ron Krause. I have, oh, there he is. How you doing? He's a big Microsoft person. He is He is definitely, as we are with Apple yes, I am. and Chachi is with, with uh, Google type devices, Android. He is, he, he's definitely the fanboy of Microsoft. Now you were showing all the devices you have in front of you here. Um, like, can you show that for, for the audience <laughs> we're recording now? A Surface RT. All right. Yes, I like the Surface RT. Um, my uh, Windows phone. I'm on an R- a Windows 8 tablet or uh, laptop. So, yes. And I do like Windows 8. Even he's, he's pre-ordered the one. He's, pre- he's pre-ordered the one? <laughs> hmm Yes, I pre-ordered the one. I'm all Microsoft all the time. Awesome. <laughs> so there are supporters. I, I, I know, like, this show, we, we kind of make it sound like nobody's really into Microsoft. Anymore, but they are. Mm-hmm. They are. We, but, and it's good to have this represented here. I mean, I'm all kind of Apple slash Google myself, you know? And I think it's time. People are starting to, to go and a hybrid metamorphosis of their devices in their home. I mean, even PlayStation people obviously have a windows type machine or an Apple type machine. You're going to see Microsoft people going in different directions, whether it be Android, maybe even a Blackberry device. I don't know. And it's so, and not to get too much into that side of the discussion, but it really is like, you know, I'm on all Apple devices, but I love Google services. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's what made picking up the tablet so much easier when, when I did, that's what made, you know, using the glass so much easier because I'm already there on my Apple devices. But, before we get into that, uh, this, of course, your awesome cast. We're over at sorgatronmedia.com. You can drop us a line at contact at uh, awesomecast.com. Uh, we're also on Twitter at awesomecast. We're on Google+. Plus. We're on uh, Facebook as well. So go drop by there. Let us know your comments on the show, anything you think is awesome, you think we should be talking about on the show, as we do have a contributed uh, awesome thing that'll be coming up here in, uh, in a little bit. But first, let's get right into it. Uh, well, let's, let's talk a little more app. Or I'm sorry, Microsoft, because I think both of you guys got something Microsoft now. Oh no, you switched yours up. I switched you? mine up. What? Okay, what'd you switch up to? I'm I'm on the, the iOS seven control enabled controllers for okay. Apple. And we were we were discussing this a little bit before the show here. My awesome my awesome thing over the week was originally the Google Web Designer, but we'll get to that. Okay. So um, I have the there's some leaks that have occurred. Logitech, obviously, a bunch of other companies are going to be creating controller type devices. I think there's a picture on there somewhere. I would hope of the device itself. I think it's still loading. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. So iOS seven. One of the major things that they did is they put APIs in for devices. Uh, yeah, if you scroll up a little bit, um, if you if you they put in APIs. So if you have a Bluetooth enabled controller, you can map that controller to games within the Apple OS or iOS. And they're also putting it in Mavericks. I didn't realize that they were actually doing that as well. Mm-hmm. So anybody that creates a Bluetooth controller or already has an existing one and the developer puts the API in there, you can map 
all of the buttons and, and whatnot into the game. Um, I haven't seen anyone doing this yet. I think there was one app that actually has some mapping stuff in there for it. I haven't gotten to play with it yet. But I think between the, the, the actual hardware controllers coming out, the ability to airplay, having 64-bit processors in their devices, I think you're really going to see the gap being bridged from a gaming perspective. I know mm -hmm. not all people will agree um, that the major type of gaming can take place on such a device, but I think we're going to hit that evolution point where... I think, um, because I think there's a there's a certain subset of gamers that are like hardcore PC gamers that get into the hardware and get into that thing and get into, I want to play my Call of Duty on, on a PC, I think. Um, and we were talking a little bit about like what that audience is versus console gamers when we're talking about the Steam OS, which maybe we'll touch on here a little bit uh, later in the show last week on Let's Play. Um, so I, I think... Like this idea of like a hardcore, this is, this is what we're going towards, right? Like this idea of like maybe a hardcore gaming or at least a gamer philosophy I, on these consoles. And, and the controllers are what's been missing. Buttons are what's been missing from this concept. It, playing a 3D first person, third person shooter mm -hmm. is not an ideal experience on a touch based device. No, no. With They're, adding in that controller. I yeah, and I, and, and Ron, I mean, Ron has the Surface RT device. He's playing, and and on the Windows Phone, he's playing Halo Assault. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, it's not first person, but he's playing Halo Assault on those devices. Mm -hmm. And but now they're touch enabled. Mm -hmm. Now on what on RT, I think you can plug in an Xbox controller, and you can use an Xbox controller. Yeah. So as yeah. as as yeah, the, if you have the kit, oh, uh, you have to have the play charge and play. Yeah, the charge. If you have the charge and play, you can plug it into the USB port and use the controller. You can also use a keyboard, mouse, or the touch. It you know depending on which configuration you're using. It actually works pretty well. I'm also it also downloaded and installed once I paid for it on the RT device onto my uh, Windows 8 laptop also. So they're, they're, nice. they're following that model where you buy it one place, buy it you once, get it. it's everywhere. Yeah. That, that's cool. But this is for <clears> things <throat> that are made for, like, the Met, is it called, it's not Metro anymore, but for the interface, right? Metro-like. The me Metro-ish <laughs> neighbor. Uh, it, it's, the always, modern, yeah. it's the modern UI. The modern UI, UI yes. Um, yeah, that's it. But, I, yeah, and I've heard about that. And it's really cool that they're, they're going along with that concept. But, again, it's, it's always been, with Microsoft, it's been, Okay, they're starting from scratch with new apps. Somehow I activated my class. Whoops. Um, so, anyways, back to back to the gaming side of things. So I could see this happening. I think you're always going to have you pick this thing up. Everybody's on their Angry Birds or Candy Crush. The things that this interface is made for. Mm -hmm. That those are always going to be things I think that are going to do the best, right? Um, but. But you're right. I think there's going to be like that hardcore gamer that is used to getting that extra hardware on their PCs. I what you what you described to me on your RT device or you know being able to plug in the controller and stuff is not much different than you know. Well, if I really want to play with a gamepad, I got to do a little more legwork on a PC on a Mac, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think those are the kind of people who are going to get these devices and maybe they kind of keep up you know in their bag or something for when they want to play something a little more serious. I mean, the graphics are there. I've been playing some stuff like when they put the Rage HD game, it was all kind of like a rail shooter thing. Mm -hmm. It was okay when they did the Doom Resurrection, which was like a Doom 3, uh, but again, it was a rail shooter. So they're, like, they're, they're making these concessions. And even some of the stuff that's first person, when done right, I can't think of it right off the top of my head. A GTA 3, I think, plays really decent for being on a touchscreen you you do still kind of want want it to be the buttons for that full experience like you had when you had it on a playstation but these things are fully capable of doing you know playstation 2 playstation you know 3 games in some instances the stuff they showed off with infinity blade 3 um i mean i'm wondering <clears throat> when they start getting to that point uh, even this last i think they just released a call of duty on here which i think is mostly based on the more strategic map version mm -hmm from the last Call of Duty, let you had a few levels. Um, but still, there's that first-person aspect to it. Um, they're getting really close. These things are getting powerful enough in our hand. I think they're kicking the butt of what's going on with DS because it's always like such a, a slimmed-down experience to get on those devices. So I'm wondering if you can get a more full-fledged Call of Duty on this eventually, on especially like a newer iPhone like these. 
Well, and that's where I see if you look at like the the minivans and what and the cars that have and and the back of the um, headrest type TV. And I've seen where people put in their an Xbox in there and they're mm-hmm. they're they're using that TV. Mm-hmm. Now I see more and more people going to the I have a slot for my iPad to slide in because my headrests don't have TVs in them. Yeah. Now if you get that gaming experience. All you need is the screen, the processing power, and now I have a controller that I can play and 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 really embrace the video game style play. You're still going to be stuck with with a 10 inch screen or a five inch screen, four point whatever inch screen. But I, I look at it as wouldn't it be nice if <clears throat> instead of lugging my Xbox with me on vacation, if I just lug my phone with me and then plug it right into the tv at the hotel room now i have a 40 inch screen that my my phone is projecting to and i have a controller and and it's more on the go i think that's where you even like the rt device even over the pro device the rt has native hdmi out whereas the pro it uses it uses a display port what they call a display port which is actually thunderbolt but I, I, I think when you get to that experience of I can take this device and plug it in and that image is up on a large screen and the, the processing power is on the device, I don't see what the problem would be. Mm-hmm. You're, I mean, you're pretty much taking one thing Microsoft does and, and the Xbox One's going to be a, a Windows-based machine. Mm-hmm. And now you're taking, okay, I have my Windows device. I can run, I could potentially run the same type of apps. I don't see what the... You're, you're, the only thing you're losing is screen real estate. There is that, and I think the openness, like re- the reason something like the Xbox can be seven years old and run games to the extent it does is because it is closed mm-hmm. versus you're going to put on all these devices. Okay, we're talking about our, you know, surfaces, right? Mm-hmm. Ideally, you mm-hmm. put on Windows, that's not just going to surfaces that we know the hardware. It's going to be on everybody else. Right, that, that, but that, it still that, runs that's the only Windows. issue. But I mean, that's not going to be any different than what they do. But the surface, now. this—I mean, the surface and any any of those Microsoft devices are either an Intel x86 based process processor set mm-hmm. or a ARM base. And I wonder if there is something where that you have like when you get, you know, wouldn't it be amazing? And when they they had like games where like say if I bought GTA Five, you know, because I'm or let's say I bought GTA Four, you know, because I know that is on Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically the same game. We know the processor that's in the Xbox. We know, we know generally, you know, those layers should work with DirectX and everything across PC. You, you put it in your Xbox, there's a profile, like there's a hardware profile that comes up and it knows how to play it on an Xbox. You put it in a PC, it knows, okay, I put the files over here, but I'm sure there's something more technically they're got to be doing with this. Yeah, I think that's where the store's going though. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, the Microsoft Store, for example, like I said before, I bought that game on the RT device, went out and purchased this Wind- this Windows 8 uh, PC, mm-hmm. went into the store, and it was available for download. So there I'm crossing platforms, you know, between the RT device having it installed and now the Windows 8 device has it installed, you know, the Windows, the traditional laptop has it installed also okay so this so is... maybe that could be happening you know okay. while we're you know because okay. everything's happening through that store through that microsoft store Let, let's think about it this way because there's, there's two there's two models for stores you can have here when you get something on ios usually you download the iphone version you are also downloading the ipad version right it's... right it's all bundled together doesn't really yeah. that works too well when you get to games right well, it doesn't. It works that way when you get to games in iOS. When you go to the Microsoft platform, you have there's, there's three way different, different architectures. Yeah, that, that's like say, and I think there there was some news they were talking about about Mac stores hopefully getting to this point too. Mm-hmm. Now I have Steam. I have games on Steam that I've bought on the PC, right? Mm-hmm. And then when they start rolling out the Mac version of it. They also, I, it pulls it up, says, hey, there's a Mac version available. It downloads that version. So are you saying, so basically on the Microsoft Store, if I buy Halo 5, say, um, I can go play it on my Xbox. It, I pull up my account on the on the, uh, on the my Surface Pro mm-hmm. that can play Halo, presumably, or, or Windows machine or whatever. Uh, and I'll just say, oh, well, here's just the Windows version that will run on your stuff. Right. Versus the Xbox version that is more 
for the Xbox. We know it will run. It runs at this clip. Mm -hmm. Period. Well, and and I think they did that with Assault. I, um, that's you originally have... Assault couldn't run on a on an older phone that only had what was it five hundred and twelve mega RAM, mm -hmm. and they actually updated right. the app to be handled on on the on the older devices or on the more low end devices which is kind of a cool thing that you do ios does the same thing mm -hmm. you know they I've, I've seen them do, do exactly that where they'll say hey it's going to run on like os5 now or something mm -hmm. so so yeah uh, i i think i i i really i really do think i'm with you guys on the mobile gaming i think i think it's going to become decentralized well it's look like, at look at emulators mm-hmm so you can go out and and I'm not touting that you I wouldn't go I wouldn't do, count that as a mass market though. It's not a mass market, but it shows you that the software you can write emulation software for the Wii mm -hmm. and I can get a Wii game and play it on my Windows based or Linux based or or whatever. It's the one thing that I uh, that I thought that kind of freaked me out. RT is a very closed app store. Yeah. Um and the only way to load an app to an RT device is through the store. There's a Super Nintendo emulator for free in the Microsoft App Store. And that is a very, that's how, that's the store's decision. Right. Right. So if they want to be like, well, the emulator is free. You know, Apple says no emulators because they don't want to be part of the battle, period. Right. Right. They, they take an overextended, you know, stance on that, unfortunately. Um, so, and, and Google has how many of them? They're mm -hmm. like, no, they're, they're free. You know, don't don't put ROMs in it. You don't know, <laughs> you know, if, if you ask us, but yeah, you do whatever you want, you know, um, which is kind of cool, you know, and that's why you guys go for that. And, mm -hmm. you know, Windows is, is categorically a, an open system too, you know, so why not? You know, I can always throw an emulator on my Mac any day, but right. not through the App Store. So uh, really, there's no like sideload or anything for like RT devices. I don't know. I don't think... I haven't seen one run. Not yet. yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> I'm shocked. I, I'm, I'm seriously shocked that it has not happened yet. Um, well, there was an interesting thing that they were talking about, too, where the way that RT works and the way that the it's some somewhat about where it's how it's compiled. It's <coughs> compiled based on the CPU and the serial number is tied also back to the CPU. So. When like Samsung, and I think this may be a problem in what fragmented a lot of companies out of creating RT devices, Microsoft had to give them a different, it was either a different co com compilation set of RT, or it had to do something with, with the way the keys work. They had to set certain keys based on CPU manufacturer and architecture type for ARM. You, I mean, there's obviously multiple companies that make ARM type processors. Is this like a security kind of thing, it, or I, I don't know what it was, um, but so, so there, the different devices use could potentially use a different rev or run of Windows RT. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they could potentially, and and I'm thinking that's what's making it a little harder to crack the side load, or is it the people don't yeah. necessarily aren't trying real hard i don't think is 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 it as much of an enthusiast device as like a android device is so maybe you don't have as many bodies on the problem right is, is my is my thought start a kickstarter and see how much money you get there you go that's how you <laughs> that's how you know well while we're on we, we, we since we went we keep diving back into the the microsoft uh, side and this makes up for everybody the last few weeks for all the apple and google news um, uh, so Ron, tell yeah, me about you. Know, I've suffered through the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about your awesome thing of the week. So, well, my awesome thing of the week is, and again, I'm a Windows Phone guy. Uh, Microsoft started a beta program for an actually pretty interesting app creator. Let me see if I can share this screen. It, there's not a whole lot to show. I haven't really played with it much yet. Um, it's called the Windows Phone App Studio. Can you guys see that? Yeah, here, I'll, I'll pull it up. So um, basically what it allows you to do, it allows you to build your, create your own apps from basically a GUI. You know, you can create an empty app. They have templates that, you're, that you can use. Um, I actually think it's a pretty exciting thing. And also one of the very interesting things is for nineteen dollars, you can um, 
you can uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you can get get a license and actually sell your app on the on the Microsoft Ooh. Store once it obviously goes through that, uh, the testing and everything. That beats uh, that beats the uh, fees for Apple. Yeah, the, the Apple fees are what ninety nine. Yeah, ninety nine a year. So it's, what what's just Google has? Is it all? It can't be free. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the obviously the SDK is free, but so is the Apple SDK. Yeah, but what is it to get into the Play Store? What is it to get into the Play Store? Twenty bucks. I mean, you. I mean, here if you create if you create an application for ninety nine cents using App Studio, Mm -hmm. and 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 I'm not saying to go out and do this, people, but if you go out and created an app and called it whatever was the hot topic of the week, I want to create an awesome cast app right here for for ninety nine cents. What do I do? How do I do this? I create it, create it from a template. Uh, what do we want here? Uh, my diet. We can do a birthday one. We can do a country one. Video. Movie. Cat- catalog, apparently. Here, let's, let's make a sports one. I mean, we'll do it for the Wrestling Mayhem show, maybe. Sports team. Image attributions. Okay. All right. But now you could go out. I mean, anyone could create any app and just start selling it. I mean... It, I, I can imagine that you could find 20 people willing to donate to you 99 cents to get your money back on the 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 license to be a registered developer. This could be this could be interesting. It could be interesting, and I, and John and I have talked about this many times. What would it be like to build an app? You know, because think about it: you build that one app and you sell it enough times, and guess what? That could you know fund you for the next year. To build the next app, mm-hmm. I mean, I, and it's just an exciting, easy way for people to get in there. And also, I should mention too, it allows you to download those files and then actually go in to their edit their you know their SDK and editing tools and make other programming changes that maybe the editor you know the GUI editor won't let you do. Yeah, which so I thought was it, kind it, of it downloads the the uh, the Visual Basic files. Is mm-hmm. that right? So if you have yeah. a little basic and you know a little bit more, so this could get you started, and then you could go in and do more. Exactly. Tinker. So even if you know how to do this, mm-hmm. this is a good start. Well, I, I just look at it as it, yeah. you, you look at those different services, uh, what Squarespace or yeah, even WordPress and their themes. It, you can quickly spin up the template and the look and feel, and yeah. then you got to throw some code behind it. Yeah. I, I look at it as this is a way to really jumpstart and move people forward. I mean, you're not going to go recreate Candy Crush. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> but if, if you want Don't something on Candy Crush right now, <laughs> if you want something that's 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 content management or that's pointed at your at sorgatronmedia.com. I mean, if you want something that, that has that, I mean, I've heard of people saying, you know what, I'm just going to go out and build this app and it, I'm going to. I'm going to put give my whole family has windows phones mm-hmm. uh, and I'm going to put it out there and it's going to be, it's going to be our family scrapbook. So everybody could have their family scrapbook app. That's just, obviously it's just meant for their family. Yeah. But, but you but, could but have but it other, out there. But other people could buy it or no, or yeah, I like, think there's some way run, right? There's some way where you can create the app and run it on your device and you don't yeah. have to publish, do that. push it to the store. That's cool. Right. That's- yeah, you can definitely do that. There's a sign up that you have to do, but you can actually register your device as a um, testing device. I forget the exact wording. Forgive me. But uh, yeah, you can definitely side side load the app from there. That's so awesome. To speak. That's that's really cool. I this is this is this is a. I just wish pe- more people used Windows Phone. To be honest, because it's a, like like I I, I hey we're the three percent. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I went awesome cast to be right into that three percent, we'll make our app and uh, well, you know and I and I think and they'll get so angry at us every episode we talk about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but as they mature with cross platform capabilities, think about it. You so now you have this WYSIWYG and it runs on Windows Phone mm-hmm. and it runs on Windows 8 and it runs on the RT device. Oh, and by the way, it's now, it, it now has a capability and you can pin it on an Xbox. That'd be amazing. Because you know how much, oh, there was something about, uh, this week in tech, they, they, they were talking about one day um, how much it is to get onto the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Like you have to go to a verified developer in order to do it. 
and the money you have to put in just to get your app on the Xbox is ridiculous. That's why you only see YouTube mm -hmm. and ABC and, and, and CW. CNET and CWs and, and everything like that. It's the companies that that's nothing to do, right? Uh, just, just contract out, they take care of it. Also, that I think that also guarantees that everything looks the same, especially since it's such a closed platform with mm -hmm. the Xbox. But I wonder how much do you think with stuff like this, with it being Windows, with this opening with the App Store, do you guys think, like, even with the Xbox, do you think that's going to become more of an open platform that I can make my thing within this thing and it's on my Xbox and I have my family scrapbook album on my Xbox? My, my vote on that is yes. And the reason I say that is because, and Ron could probably go a little more in depth than I can on this, but... When you when they talk about Windows Blue, which was eight, what eight point one yeah. brings yeah. October, you're going to yep. see the convergence of the platforms. And even on the phone side, the phone. Correct me if I'm wrong, and you might be able to cover this. Like I said, more in depth. It's, it's GDR four is the Blue Rev, and I think Ron yep. can talk to this better than I can. Yep, GDR four and and that Windows Phone Blue is good. Is supposed to merge bring everything together so it, it's you know it's one of those happy places where you develop it in one place and you'll be able to either through some kind of uh re recompiling or whatever move it to those multiple platforms i really do think i think with the xbox one you're going to see more of that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. you're right the, the xbox is a lockdown platform you know there are no um, what was the, in the back in the old days, the old uh, sharks or whatever it was, you know, the PlayStation had to give yourself unlimited oh, ammo. The game sharks, like the game genies. Game shark, that was it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I truly believe that you're going to see more and more of that as the product matures. Granted, you might not see it day one, but I, I, I truly believe that's where they're headed. That's where the store's going. I would not be surprised at all. To see specials where, okay, maybe it's not one price to cover all platforms, but maybe you know down the road they'll say, hey, you know GTA Seven, you want it for your PC too? You know, spend I don't know ten extra dollars and have it in both places or something. Well, we like kind of get this now. Those are all things I believe that are going to happen. I mean, that's kind of the concept we get now. You got combo pack. I want on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy. You pay an extra ten bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think we're already getting. Right. used to this idea as far as something like that goes versus you know we're probably more spoiled on the uh maybe android uh apple size where it's one price and i have it on everything you know um i, I think that's great that's that's exciting I, I love that you know and as much as i kind of you know laugh off the microsoft so i'm huge in xbox xbox is my console of choice mm -hmm. i love the idea of this stuff crossing over um i like that they have been open enough to do like the smart the smart class mm -hmm. um like i use it on my phone and my tablet my android tablet all the time you know so i mean at least they didn't pin their hopes of that on their windows phone they, they realize where their market share is you know maybe if they get up to 25 percent, you'll start seeing them do exclusive stuff on the phone but um but i think they're in the right position there you know and I think they're trying to go. They they realize there there's more there's more to it. They're they're becoming a devices and services company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what's the big deal with offering a service to other platforms? It's kind of the Google idea. Like maybe 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 in a couple years, mm -hmm. instead of uh, all these G's on my desktop of my uh, of my iPhone, I want to have Microsofts, mm -hmm. you know, or Windows logos, or maybe they'll they'll finally make it the M money. You know, and, and um, if you look at apps like Smart Glass did it, yeah, uh, is, exactly. And, and this that is an app, and, and, and case in point, that is an app that's on my quick launch that I have right there. So, I mean, it is like on second layer activation because that's what I use to pull up to go pull up Netflix, Hulu Plus, you know, whatever on my TV when I want it when I want to do that. One so, of the one of the impressive apps that I've seen over over time that that's really evolved is is OneNote. Mm -hmm. So you have OneNote on your on your iPad, you have OneNote on your phone, you have OneNote across the Microsoft platforms, and it integrates with Live. Is it is it Live? Uh, three hundred and sixty. Yeah, it's, you don't even need three hundred and sixty. It's uh, SkyDrive. 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 Okay. So, which SkyDrive? I hear great things about SkyDrive. Yeah. So now I can take SkyDrive is amazing. 
<laughs> I can take notes and, and Ron uses this at work all the time. I can take notes on one device, pull it up on another. I, I Wherever I'm at, I can get to it. And it sounds like the biggest thing, the biggest thing Microsoft's accomplishing lately is things don't feel as clunky as they used to. So I remember being on a SharePoint server at my old job and it was just the worst experience ever. I'm actually on uh, uh, Outlook webmail uh, for for my adjunct mm -hmm. and, and and the kids get Gmail web apps. And I'm like, why, why <laughs> do you do that? You taught me so. I hate it every time I have to check my email uh, because it, it's it's that whole SharePoint Outlook online web client thing and mm -hmm. it doesn't work the way that I think it should, you know, as, as a mail client. But it sounds like, you know, with the stuff like SkyDrive, uh, aren't they including like so much SkyDrive with these new services and service <laughs> pros? Um, this idea that, you know, and they're getting general population that's used to the windows name say okay what's this windows device uh uh used to that idea of storing stuff in the cloud stuff on your device yeah which makes sense since you have these portable crazy devices anymore well and, and i mean it is it is a really nice device as mm -hmm. far as weight's concerned as far as i'm not that impressed with the pro on battery life but no um hopefully the pro 2 will bring much better battery life but it, it, it is a nice device mm -hmm. and it works well. And I know like Alex is in here in the chat and I think from this day one, I, I, I agree with this wholly because uh, uh, with the surface or with the RTs, but more, more and so the pros, I think if you're a graphics person, I do think the surface makes sense. <clears throat> it completely makes sense. Happy. I know I had that pen support. Um, mm -hmm. Melango that was on the show a couple weeks ago that does the movie minute. Um, he got a windows seven tablet a few years ago. Um, and, and that that's what made sense for him because I know he was doing. Um, he had this like monitor touch thing of the. I can't remember the name of it. It was the bamboo. Wacom. Wacom. Yeah, and and he would have this thing. He took it to the con with us one time, and so it's a monitor that he's basically using, you know, over in the tablets and, and and to be able to, you know, and I'm hoping Photoshop. Photoshop just updated uh, their Creative Cloud uh, mm -hmm. from CS6 to CC. Um, so I'm hoping they're adding support in for that. They still won't let me go full screen in my Mac OS, but, uh, hopefully they added enough touch support for something like the surface devices in windows eight. Cause they're usually really slow on the uptake for those. Um, but yeah, I, I think any graphics person that loves using a pencil in the hand, that makes sense for them for sure. Um, fun. I, does LTE interfere with audio? Is this a new thing? I don't think so because I'm hearing this now. Um, <laughs> now I've always had it and I've always had it, but you, but all the equipment's over here. So uh, I, I just noticed a little bit of crackling when I, when I was getting text messages. So that hmm. is a new situation. You don't get the order. clicking like the old black. No, 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 you no, get no. Static. But that happened to me at a wrestling show this weekend. <laughs> Cause we were like down in white Oak and between mountains and none of us got really got service. I had my phone and Chachi's, uh, T-Mobile phone and I'm on ATT. So we're both like, I, I heard like one second. I'm like, get the freak away from this. <laughs> and then, and then I got a new LTD LTE device to play with glass for on Verizon. And, uh, and, and Missy brought that over because she wasn't using or anything. I was still on. I didn't want to turn it off in case she was using it for a square. Um, and it started crackling on the headset that I communicated with Chachi with. And I'm like, get this the freak away. I don't even know why that's working. It doesn't even, <laughs> it doesn't even have GSM. Why is this doing this? Yeah. Why? What's causing it? Um, so I, I think this is a new LTE problem. I, I've never had LTE up until two weeks ago. So this is, this is some new. Yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't seen much issues, whether it be Bluetooth headset or, or anything mm -hmm. related as far as LTE is concerned. We have, um, phone systems that are in a lot of our conference rooms that the BlackBerry and the GSM signal do cause the the clicking, but I I have not I have not been in a conference room yet where LTE is mm -hmm. caused. And it's always it's it's issue. when it drops the edge. Like okay, that's when it has the problem usually. If you're on three G, four G, quote unquote, you usually don't have a problem. CD, mm -hmm. CDMA has never had a problem. But I've been on production before. They were like, close your phone, you know, shut your phone off. We're not going to ask you, you know, figure out well what are you on, you know, just mm -hmm. shut your phones off. Let's just make this easy. Um, and it makes sense, right? So, um, excellent. I, I got one more awesome thing. Like, I'm, I'm sure we'll circle back around to the Microsoft stuff here uh, again. That seems to be the theme of the show. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I really, I really am kind of interested in tinkering in this app uh, uh, studio going on here. So I got a new uh, doohickey um, called Automatic. Actually, I, we talked about this. What I think when it was first, they were first talking about it um, uh, in the news. Uh, I put a pre-order in for it, like, way back in May. It came, like, Thursday. <laughs> so, 
Was it a Friday Kickstarter or, or was it? No, it wasn't a Kickstarter. This okay. is a full on company. Here it is automatic. So the idea <clears throat> is you put this little doohickey. There it is right there. Um, you put this in your OD, OBD2 port in your car, which is usually for me, it's like right under the steering wheel. Right. Um, and so this thing communicates Bluetooth when it's, it's taken the readout from your from your car. Right. It communicates Bluetooth to your phone, which I got away from all my audio equipment. Um, and I like so far for what I've used it for. I really think to it. Think of it as Fitbit for your car. So if you're on video, you, hopefully you see there. OK, I'll get does that say your average miles per hour is 97? No, no, no. Are you, no, dry, score, are you speeding? No, 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 no. My score for the week is 97. It okay. says my <laughs> miles per gallon for the week. And this is since Monday. Actually, this is only Monday because I haven't been to the car since missy mm -hmm. took the car today um but you can see it it, it tracks the things that uh, in this instance uh it, it tracks the things that are known for your mile per gallon to drop mm -hmm. like hard braking fast acceleration and if you uh traveled over uh 70 miles per hour and the device itself in your car will actually beep at you and there's a certain beep for each one so let you know hey that was a hard break you're screwing up your gas mileage and it actually goes through and and hold on, if I can get that on there, um, you see the yellows and the and the pinks and everything for when when I, I uh, you know hard broke or something like that. But it also tells you roughly estimated. I don't know where it's getting the data from for for gas prices, but it tells you like okay, I drove thirty six point eight miles on my way back from my Monday job, um, and that cost me seven dollars and eighteen cents. That's cool. I know exactly how much it costs for me to go out and commute, for mm -hmm. me to go out on a certain shoot. Um, I know what mile, you know, what my gas mileage is doing. I have a score. Uh... See Jeep uh, exactly where you parked in case you get drunk on okay. the south side. Um, <laughs> it also pops up. Uh, I got no problems detected, but um, whenever your check engine light comes on, okay, you can see what is the problem because that port is used. And, and this is something, and I mentioned this on my video uh, because I did a really quick kind of intro. Hey, we, we put it in. Here's my first impressions. I'll, I'll do a blog on it too because um, my dad would always get these readers for the obd port and uh you plug it in it gives you a code and then you get this big thick book this mm -hmm. encyclopedia book tells you mm -hmm. what the code is and you try to figure out what's wrong with your car like when it's something that's like has to do with your computer system or a computer can read it um no, so now it pops up the number what it is and if it's something like i need to change my oil or something or or put more fluid in or something like that um i do it but the light doesn't go off as i think most people have been plagued with at some mm -hmm. time or another you can just turn it off right from the app. Wow. Yeah. Um, so again, nothing's been really wrong with my car. Well, there's things wrong with my car, but nothing apparently that comes through that port. <laughs> uh, those things we still have to figure out. Um, the other cool thing is um, it will, and this actually isn't activated yet since they're, they're kind of early, um, but there is an automatic uh, help in a crash. So if you, 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 you're in a, a wreck, um, they'll do a crash alert. They'll they'll send emergency help. They'll do uh, apparently. I, I think if I'm reading this right, uh, it'll actually contact people. So they can also send a text message to your loved ones to let them know an emergency dispatchers are being uh, contacted. So I get in a I get in a wreck out out on the parkway. My wife gets a text. Now, is that a good thing? <laughs> You might be able to hide the fact. Well, I would that hope it's more than a fender bender. I, I imagine this is the the airbags have been deployed. Okay. This happens. So OnStar does the same thing, right? Um, so I, I think if it is bad enough, my airbags have been deployed. I'm not driving that thing home. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's. I think it's a good idea that it tells you that there were somebody like the ambulance or the nine one one, but to text your family and say, "Hey, the airbag's been deployed." Aren't they going to try to reach out to you? Well, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, does this say, does this also send them a link that says, here's where he had a wreck if you want to go find out what's going on, which that could <laughs> cause more problems, actually. 
Um, but still, I mean, that, that lets you say, you know, uh, my wife gets a text. I was going to, uh, you know, PTI for work one day and you know, she knows I'm somewhere between here and there. Mm-hmm. Right. So she knows, you know, and she's smart enough. She works with law. She knows how to do this stuff. She knows who to call in emergency services to find me if I'm unconscious at some hospital somewhere, um, to figure that out. So now does it, it's reliant on the Bluetooth connectivity to your phone. And, and here's where I'm going with this. Uh, well, okay, so, okay. so someone, so if I steal your car, your phone's not going to be. That's my question. I, this, that's one thing I can't figure out is GPS connected to this. Now the device, there's a serial on the device. Mm-hmm. And also it has my VIN number, by the way, when I pull it up, okay. uh, when I pull up my car information. So it knows the car, you know, Okay. Um, the device is, Linked to my car because okay. that's serial code. So, and that's why I'm not entirely sure if the if, if the 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 GPS is on there or the GPS is getting off here because I Bluetoothed it and it picked it up like when I parked. Right. It knows you shut the car off here, right? And so it marks that in the app. So I don't know exactly how smart that is. So, well, because I'm just looking at it like you could load jack your car. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if if you if if you're worried or you live in a neighborhood where car theft is pop, popular, or you, you walk out, you're parking in the south side and someone steals your car. I mean, it's it's like find my iPhone or or whatever service from whatever company. You now tell the cops, here's where my device is. Go find it. It's the same thing for your car. And I'm trying to f- see if they have anything about that GPS side of it. Uh, my guess is they wouldn't have a gps ship in this do you pay a monthly fee no okay then i'm guessing i'm guessing no it's probably i'm I'm thinking it just it just it just well g wait it could do the gps it could do the gps but usually gps doesn't do a ping back for a check-in okay so like you think about it like you buy a garmin or whatever Mm -hmm. you don't pay a monthly fee for that Mm -hmm. you pay for map updates sometimes sometimes the map updates are free forever and the f- the device gets a feed down from a GPS satellite. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, GPS send a GPS ping. is a service. It's, it's right. you ping off that, and but it usually those devices don't send up upload type data. Okay, they're only pulling satellite coordinate data down. Mm-hmm. That then's doing an overlay of a map that's loaded on the device. Okay, and, and since this thing doesn't <clears throat> actually have an internet connection independently, it's right. not going to do the whole connection thing. Probably so not. I think it is a lot of that stuff is relying on your device that you paired it with. Now this is compatible with um, uh, all i all current iOS um, devices. They have Android. Uh, they do have Android. I think you have to. It may be specific. Okay. Um, because when you went through, you had, you had to tell it what car you were using to make sure, double check it was compatible. It says it works in most cars from nineteen ninety six on. Uh, it's going for sixty nine ninety five. This is a limited time. I guess. Wow, I didn't realize I got in on this. Uh, it's going to be ninety nine ninety five uh, after October seventh. Actually, uh, no subscription fees. New iPhone order ship in October. Just letting you know that. Oh, here it is. Um, so it does have a device selection thing. Again, it has a IO, uh, iPhone 4S and then the 5, 5S, 5C. Um, but it really, they just, they give you, like, there was actually a thing in there. It says on the box, uh, automatic for iPhone. So there are two separate units. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like I could go get, uh, well, I, hey, I can check with my tablet. I can pull the automatic app and mm-hmm. see if it pulls up, see if I can get the automatic app, if it's even compatible with this. Yeah, try um, it. Why not? Give it a shot. Uh, but uh, yeah, as far as the Android side, uh, it says that it's shipping in beta. So it is iPhone right now uh, only, but it's going to be beta in December. Uh, they're looking at versions of the Motorola Droid, HTC Thunderbolt, Samsung Galaxy devices, and the Google LG. That's the Nexus 4. Uh, so if you want to get in there, you know, again, it's a... You know, what is it? Now. Is it that they're looking at phones that are like the Bluetooth have bluetooth 4 low guessing, energy because i think i think it does say bluetooth 4 on the box okay so so, so, that, so it, that that's why, why they're that's why they're probably showing because because while well, i'm going to try to act pro microsoft at the same point in time i'm going to act anti-microsoft the one thing that microsoft has failed to do <laughs> on their phone line is put in bluetooth 4 mm-hmm. so it's something that they were going to oh, offer or, or nokia yeah hasn't. you mean but I think that even the so HTC's made devices, there's other companies. 
I don't know but from even, what I'm reading. If that, you look at this list, and, and I'm sure there's more than what's on this list, but I mean, this is the high-end Droid Galaxies Nexus mm-hmm. HTC. But so. I'm sure there's Bluetooth, there's Bluetooth LE on your on your Nexus tablet, and those aren't a mm. super expensive device. They're native. They're they're Google native, which is really nice, and yeah. they're not. You're not paying a premium for yeah, but John, Samsung's name. Go ahead. Let's face it. The the Google device was made a year ago. You know, designed a year ago. You know, my Windows phone currently doesn't have Bluetooth four, but it, it's you know two, at least two years old by now. But even like the ten twenty, the Lumia te, Lumia ten twenty doesn't have Bluetooth four. And now they're going back and forth, and the, the question is, can they do it with a firmware update, or is it a hardware limitation? And don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I like the Lumia 1020 device. It's it's a great camera. It it offered it really serves that nice. It's just not on the cutting edge as far as Bluetooth. Goes. But as far as the Bluetooth, and you're seeing more and more devices come out that are that are requiring Bluetooth. I, I like we talked about the Pebble watch. Mm-hmm. Y- you look at these devices that are coming out and they require that low energy Bluetooth four profile. I just wonder, I think I'm sure now that, that they're catching heat for it. The next device I know, I think there's going to be a slew of devices announced. What is it? October 23rd. 22nd, 22nd, 22nd where Nokia is going to be announcing all their new product line. I'm, would hope that that's in there but Mm -hmm. we'll see excellent so we do have one user submitted awesome thing of the week so i do want to get to that this one's from alex that we mentioned earlier uh with his uh hopefully he's getting a surface tablet here uh he he contributes a lot to the wrestling mayhem show so this actually is a little bit of a crossover but still a social media thing he wanted to share and i saw a little bit of this last night too uh, he says, hey, guys, I wanted to share my awesome thing of the week uh, this week. Last night's hashtag I am Chikara campaign trending on Twitter. Chikara is, was, question mark, a professional wrestling company based in Philadelphia, PA, uh, heavily inspired by comic books and video games and such. Great wrestling action was uh, had for t- 11 years until the events of their IP review back in June when the company appeared to be uh, shut down. Over the past few months, signs of hope have sprung up. Uh, in the form of viral marketing campaign in the uh, videos on YouTube and Vine called, quote, Ashes, as well as the campaign run by the wrestler Icarus called hashtag I am Chikara. Last night was the start of what appears to be the next step of this campaign as members of Chikara fan base were called to tweet what we loved about the company in an effort to get the hashtag trending on Twitter, and it worked to sweet success. Uh, and granted, during Monday Night Raw, which is the biggest pro wrestling show uh, in the week, uh, the, the the reason I wanted to share all of this with you uh, guys is because the use of social media spread the word around quickly. It was a pretty big deal with Jakara leading up to what seemed to be the final iPay-Per-View. And even with its status up in the air, it continues to show the importance of social media. Awesome. This is a company that I think got it early. They're mostly an indie company. They're, they're smaller. You know, they're not on TV. Never were on TV or anything like that. Um, but when I, these are this is one of the first wrestling companies I saw do podcasts. They had something called the Podcast of Go-Go, where they did like a 10-minute talking. Every week, regardless, they would talk about events coming up. They'd talk about what's going on. Maybe have one of the wrestlers on talking. Do a clip from one of their past shows that's just like a crazy, you know, part of a match or a crazy look at this. Um, They got it. They got how to Mm -hmm. use YouTube. They got how to use iTunes, podcasting. Um, I think it's the next step for them. Uh, There's a lot of speculation what's going on with this company. Are they going to become something else or these spinoffs and stuff? Um, But this is a company that has no marketing budget. I'm pretty sure no marketing budget. Um, and this is a really cool kind of grassroots thing they did last night. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm with I'm with you on that. Um, and, and, and we don't, you know, we, we always see like big marketing campaigns with our Monday Night Raws and TV shows and stuff. But it's cool to see something that's not as big still really making a make splash. It, really yeah, making make a big, big splash like this, you know. Um, you know, somebody that, you know, we know some friends on radio shows that can get some stuff mm-hmm. going here. Um, but it's nice to see people that aren't on the mass media. Well, and it's interesting know. too, that, that, uh, you see, you do see radio shows or you see even TV shows that have been brought back to life yeah, because exactly. of a social media campaign that's grassroots roots efforted. Uh, um, I just think this goes to show that 
the internet gives people a voice and if you if you get a couple people on that train it's moving fast mm -hmm. the, the word spreads very quickly now i i also wonder if this is one of those things that it's it's is this actually the company working with it with these wrestlers mm -hmm. and trying to get hype up for whatever their next phase is or is this did the company really shut down they're trying to convince the owner to bring it back Either you know either I mean? way, I don't think way, it, either yeah, way, exactly. I don't think it matters. I, I think it shows that people want a product, and and they're 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 asking for it slash demanding it, mm -hmm. and, and and it's working. I, I think it's great. Which could lead you into I, I don't know if you want to talk about PodCamp at all. <laughs> PodCamp Pittsburgh's this Saturday. Um, we are scheduled to do an awesome cast live. I'm not sure if we want to do that right now. Uh, we, we are scheduled right after uh, lunch to do that. Um, so I'm going to see if I can gather up the troops to go talk. It's a little weird because it's in the middle of the one day it's happening, and we mm -hmm. usually do it the last thing of the weekend. Yeah. So it's kind of like a recap. It, it, it yeah, gives yeah. you a lot of so, good content. So I think we're going to try to use that to say, hey, this is us doing a podcast live. You can be a part of that. Um, I think that's what you should do. I think you should get everybody in the audience to be a part of give podcast. participate in some way. Yeah. Because, I mean, none of the, I don't think, like, you're not going to be able to be there. Yeah, um, I have a wedding, unfortunately. Uh, not my wedding. Josh is going to be busy helping me with the video. Uh, uh, I don't know if Rob's going to be around, to be honest. Um, so, and I think, but there's going to be plenty of people that have been on the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to see who's not actually on in competing, uh, sessions or anything like that. And we're going to try to do this. Um, so it'll probably be a little bit slim, slimmed down version of it, but you know, that that's fine. Um, we've done that before. Uh, so there's that. I'm also going to be talking about glass and I think I'm going to just spin off a little bit talking about wearable computing, you know, you with the pebble mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, my wife with the Fitbit and kind of talk about how that's going, but I think it's it's mostly going to be about Google Glass. Um, so pretty wide open session talking about uh, you know my experience with it for anybody who wants to listen to that. Um, but there's all kinds of uh, great stuff going on there if you you're in the Pittsburgh area or even if you're not in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, PodcampPittsburgh.com is going to be at Point Park University uh, again this Saturday, October fifth. Um, we are going to see about we're working on utilizing Google Hangouts for the stream this year. Uh, it's been working pretty well here, bringing everybody in. Uh, we've been playing with it as far as um, some other streaming deals um, uh, for some of my clients and everything. So we're going to set up laptops in every room and get that feed. And we're also going to independently through Sorgatron Media Equipment um, record those things with good cameras and we're going to try to make a little more focus on the audio capture this year now. Mm -hmm. Last year was let's get the visuals up. Right. This year, let's get the audio up. <laughs> okay. So, cool. Um, so we, that's why I'm trying to get some volunteers. So if you're like in a Pittsburgh area, want to be there, would like to sit in a room for the day, you can pick your track amongst the volunteers um, and help us make sure everything gets captured in a pretty good quality and monitoring audio and everything. Uh, let me know. Drop me a line at Sorgatron on Twitter. Um, but no, it's going to be fun. Uh, PodCamp's a, a blast. Um, there's a lot of new faces pointed together this year. Um, so they're trying a lot of different things. I mean, this is the eighth one. You know, and we, we were a, a good discussion last week about like where it's come. Well, it's somebody, I think uh, Norm, Mr. Derby, uh, Norm mm -hmm. Hillsman that was on here last week, tweeted, I remember when we first started PodCamp and we were worried about tweeting the weather and what kind of sandwich I had. <laughs> I remember the first PodCamp I went to, I was using is it bright kite to check into places <laughs> bright kite yes <laughs> yes which just got gobbled up by foursquare yeah I mean, what the hell is a gowala <laughs> right and what was the one chat chachi was trying to bring back plurk plurk He's still trying to bring back plurk i think somebody just followed him on plurk <laughs> um he was telling me the other day <clears throat> so yeah i exactly um it, it's it's changed so much um Hey, Chikara had an app. Alex, you, they got a few apps on the iOS store. Um, but, yeah, it's really cool to kind of look at that. I mean, there was actually, and, and, and I set up a thing on my on my Twitter, uh, scheduled it over the last month when they announced the date, uh, of because we've done so many videos. You know, mm -hmm. we've done some promotional videos. We've done like, so many session videos are up on YouTube. If you look up PodCamp Pittsburgh, you're going to have pages of content to watch. Hours of stuff. But there was one sit down we did with Justin Kanaki, one of the co-founders, and uh, it was, you know, what do you see in social media in the next five years? 
hey, guess what? It's five years oh, later. That's cool. Because we did that for Pod Camp Three. Okay. Here we are. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, go check out that stuff. Check out my Twitter stream for that kind of stuff. Uh, and hope to see you there at Pod Camp Pittsburgh. We'll be getting in trouble, uh, I'm sure. So there you go. Uh, and it really, it, it really is um, kind of cool to look at. I know the Pod Camp really seems like an antiquated name. But I think it works. I mean, obviously, there's a big following. There's pod camps all over the world. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I love to see the podcasting stuff that, spr- that sprung up last mm-hmm. last year. Like there was a lot of podcasting talk. Yeah. You know, it's like, good. This thing is not dead. I'm not the only one in the city doing this thing. <laughs> Thank you. There were, you know, and I think it'd be interesting. And I, and I haven't gotten a, a, a chance to go out. And there used to be a pod camp org type website that actually showed you all the cities that have pod camps and mm-hmm. when they are and whatnot. It would be interesting to see when those are and can you kind of do, do they handle it the way Pittsburgh really tries to embrace it with a live video feed? Can can you consume and, and contribute no matter where you are? I can tell you it's been difficult to see. Uh, and it's, it's definitely waning. If you look at this list here, I mean, it, there's like three coming up and we're not, for whatever reason, we're not even on this one. Yeah, there's last year's. Um, so I think the whole pod camp as a concept is waning, but mm-hmm. there's whole, so many other conferences. I've been hearing about the great XOXO. It's in San Francisco or Seattle, somewhere out West, mm-hmm. but it's like invite only It's creative types to all get together and talk and everything. There's these mini camps South by Southwest has gotten <laughs> so humongous. I don't even know if I would ever want to go there, you know, from the mm-hmm. sounds of things like, but there's all these camps. There's a, a give camp they do where they code over the weekend that Josh Shaker is involved with. Uh, for uh, helping like put sites together for for nonprofits, I think they just had another one a couple weeks ago. Um, but the, you know, now I think it's divided out. Like pod camps are really nice because it was a nice broad social media and web thing. But I think there's a lot of opportunities for these other things. You yeah, know, like a break the, off. Yeah, yeah. These other camps. There was another <clears throat> camp. Um, for like MySpace. A, there's like a yeah. There you go. Where's our MySpace <laughs> camp? But no, there was like a cloud camp I'm hearing that CMU is going to put together. Um, the TEDx events that have been popping. There's mm-hmm. two in this city, Grandview Avenue, which doesn't happen on Grandview Avenue, and uh, the CMU one. CMU. So, yeah. um, I, I think I think it's really cool to kind of look at all those events. I encourage everybody wherever you are to look for those kinds of things. You know, there's a Google Glass meetup for the people that have them. I would start one here, but I think there, I think I met the other guy via phone. Um, <laughs> so. You know, well, actually, I know they got 10 of them over at CMU. So, okay. so there you go. So maybe, maybe we start something like that, you know. Um, or just a wearable computing. Yeah, wearable computing. Oh, I like that idea. We, we should do. I, they're, they're talking about this on, on one of the podcasts <clears throat> I was to listen to. It was like, we do a wearable. Well, this is really the wearable computing show mm-hmm. here, though. But, <laughs> but I'm sure there's. I, I, well, here, here was the funny part. So when I the day I got the pebble, mm-hmm. I tweeted a picture of the pebble and, and and I was amazed at, and and I'm not saying I got hundreds of tweets back, but I would say I probably got between five and 10 tweets immediately from people that followed me that said, Hey, look at mine. (laughs) And like, it was really cool to see like, okay, this person has the silver one. This person has this color Mm -hmm. one. And interestingly enough, uh, me being as weird as I am, they're taking pictures of their wrist and I'm trying to make out what's in the background. So mm-hmm. like I, there was one picture of, of someone and they got the Kickstarter edition and their whole computer in the background. It was just the, their computer monitor and you can't read it, mm-hmm. but all you could tell all it is is code. Everything's color coded. It's, <laughs> it's this dark. It's like this dark background. looks like they're coding in some kind of Unix platform, but uh, it was really cool to see people come back with, Hey, I got one too. It's awesome. Uh, like I, I do maybe, see it. Maybe, maybe we should start, maybe we should start a meetup here. Why not? Maybe a wearable computing meet the Pittsburgh wearable computing meetup. We'll we'll, we'll we'll pay our ten bucks to meet up and do it. I guess <laughs> because apparently yeah, they, they're charging for it now. Oh really? Yep. Uh, uh, Malengo on the movie show has been. He wants to do a movie meetup, and uh, and I'm involved with somebody doing the uh, integrative psychiatric medicine, right? Integrative, integrative medicine, whatever uh, one. Uh, so yeah, I guess they're charging like ten bucks a year to do meetups. So hopefully that helps the quality. Hopefully that means there will actually be ones that people show up to. So we'll see about that. So I, I mean, you really got me on this wearable computing idea. Um, so I want to touch on. Let's see if there's any other big ones real quick. Okay, all right. 
tell me about Bing Rewards. Yeah, he's going to throw me a bone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell well, me about this. Well, Bing Rewards, let's see. Um, believe it or not, on Bing, you can sign up for their rewards program, and I'm here to tell you it works. <laughs> um, I've gotten mo the last two apps I purchased are on gift cards. And if you go in here under rewards, so you can see here how many points I have so far. So you're on the Bing page. And believe it or not, there is a very extensive list of different items that you can get. Hey, John, Starbucks. Oh, sweet. I didn't know. I Red thought box. you only, I, th yeah. I thought you only got back Microsoft stuff. Oh, no. You can, there's, Plenty of things in here that you could get points back for. So you can use um, Redbox. And it's kind of interesting, too, because you can um, go in here on a daily basis. See, here's like today's offers. So I've earned, I've done 10 of 30 searches. So you earn one credit for every three searches that you do. Uh, you know, and referring friends, which, by the way, if anybody wants to sign up for this, I have yet to refer anyone. So please let me know. And I will be sure to refer you. So but even like every day, they'll have a different website that you or search that you can do that'll earn your credit. Um, other things to earn chances on different prizes and things like that. And seriously, if you're going to do search, why not get paid to search? Yeah, this, that's this basically is, what this is. This isn't something you're going to sit there and kind of game and 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 plug in searches because it looks like about a hundred goes so every. Three searches is a credit. It looks like about every hundred credits is about a dollar worth of, of, of anything. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, you're not going to earn thousands of dollars or anything doing this. But heck, if once every three months you got a free Redbox movie. Worth it. Or I mean, I, I think yeah, you, like exactly the, like you said, the last couple the last couple paid games you got, you got through the rewards. So I, I don't know. Yep. I, I look at it as I mean I'm I'm on the on the the same concept of I'm trying not to pay necessarily always a, a premium for apps. So I look at apps gone free. I look at app advice. I, there's a couple websites that I go to, to that shows apps that are temporarily free or on sale. Not only would you have that capability, but I could potentially for for a, a minimal amount of searching I do a day. You jump over to Bing, run your searches, and you're you're getting you're getting money back. I don't. I, I'll be honest with you. This this uh, refer me, refer me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna convert you yet, buddy. You just wait. <laughs> Carrying a darn pro. One day it will key. happen. I'll be using Bing. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you what. If, if I ever saw a good, a nice search app. Mm -hmm. it, it, way back in the day when when iOS was like at version five, mm -hmm. Bing built an amazing iPad. App. I remember that it looked it looked it looked good. Yeah, it, it looked, looked amazing. phenomenal. So I, I I have nothing against Bing. I just live in a Google world. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it, that, it's so easy for me to do. But I'm kind of curious to like maybe I need to do the Bing challenge for like a, a week or something like that and do all Bing. Because I, I, I just to see what what the experience is like. Right. Because just popping in every once again, I don't. I, I'm looking at my account here. I, I'm up on the rewards page. My my Facebook isn't even connected to stuff to see what the social stuff is mm -hmm. that they do. So it might be worth just looking at. You know, what's it gonna hurt? Throw a referral my way, man, so I can test with this thing. <laughs> if you could, <laughs> Actually, I'll. I'll just tweet it out, and anybody that clicks it, I get credit for it. There you so, go. Okay. There you go. Perfect. We'll retweet it. And, and hash, hashtag it. Yeah. Or we'll, yeah. Perfect. There you go. Crazy Krause on Twitter <laughs> if you want to check that out. <laughs> All right. Real quick. Let's check on. Uh, yeah, we're about that time. So uh, you got a service. You, one, you got a service pro, which is this is mm -hmm. new. So you don't have to tell us how you got it or anything like that. Um, but. You've been using it for a bit. You're an IT guy. They announced the new surfaces recently. I've been waiting to get your opinion and definitely yours too. I, I think it's going to be a good device. Is it going to be? I, and I, I, it's interesting because you know people complain about price. My main thing is battery, 
and that's what I care most about, is mm -hmm. how much battery am I going to get out of this device? Because therefore, how much can I can potentially consume? Um, I am I have not gotten to the point where I'm using the device as much as I would like to. I don't use the Pro as much as I would like to because of battery life. I don't use the RT device as much as I would like to because of app selection. Do you end up using the iPad more? Like, what is your tablet? My go-to tablet because of the interface and design and app selection mm -hmm. is iPad. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone like Ron, I mean, I'm sure he can comment. Living in that app world, Ron is much more apt to do everything through a browser. Mm -hmm. I am much more apt to do everything through an app. If you don't give me an app, I will not consume your service. Holy alliteration. <laughs> so so look at look at it like Facebook. If there's no Facebook app on the device, mm -hmm. I'm not visiting Facebook. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't even think of the last time I went to Facebook.com from a web browser. Yeah. Same with Twitter. Whereas if you're already in if if you're new to the concept, fire up a browser and go to the website. And and I'm sure it works great for them. That's where I, I think the RT needs a better, a healthier app ecosystem and something like the app piece or the, the app generation will definitely cater to that to that need. Mm -hmm. The Pro 2 with Haswell will definitely cater towards a longer battery life. Mm -hmm. I, I do think also interesting is this, um, they have a power keyboard now that actually adds on mm -hmm. your battery life. Power cover. Power cover, That that's, that's a nice yep. addition. Um, I haven't seen anything about this docking station. I've heard about it. The docking station looks really nice. Mm -hmm. now, now, Ron, when you use your, your RT, do you, cause I, I rarely dock. Mm -hmm. So I'm more on the go. Like, like right now it's on, it's on my, my lap. I don't need the surface two that has the, the kickstand. And I understand where people that are taller, they need the kick, the kickstand to come back more. I, I don't know. Do you find yourself docking your device or plugging into a monitor or is the docking station there for the video? No, not really, because where I'm using it, the majority of the time when I'm using it, it's on the couch next to the better half, watching some TV, you know, searching the internet for something or hunting around in a little game or something like that. And now when I'm at work, I like to have it plugged in because obviously there's a power cord right there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I use it for email, you know, sending email back and forth for different testing and things like that. So it's just convenient that there's a power cable right there. And that way, when I do get home in the evening and if I decide to use it, it'll already be charged. So, you know, but for the most part, when I'm using my Surface, although right now I'm on the chat, chat room on the Surface on that machine right next to me, and I do have it plugged in at the moment. But again, mm. it's because right next to me, there's a surge protector that I can plug it into. That is one thing they did well, the battery power, definitely on, on the Surface. And I think the Surface 2 is going to take that. I think their naming scheme is going to cause them some problems. But So you have the Surface RT, which yeah, I agree. is upgraded to the Surface 2. You have the Surface Pro, which goes to Surface Pro 2. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, how for you being more apt to their their app ecosystem? I mean, looking at my and, and this is not going to be a perfect example, but I have probably fifteen apps, and this is even on Pro. So on the modern UI, I have like fifteen apps installed. But I don't, I don't know, like on your RT device, how many? Because you've gone to the extent I think Ron actually extracted video from YouTube with an app, edited the video, and then republished it. Yeah, so I mean... Oh, that, they, dude, that screen is looking <laughs> good on your, even on your webcam. That, it, it is a beautiful device. Like, yeah, I, I, I have a bunch of apps. But, but like John said, you know, I have... There's my Facebook icon. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, I launched the store. But, you know, pin Facebook. You guess what? You get to the website. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, and I'm okay with that. You know, I don't need an app. But then again, I'm, I guess I'm not as in touch with my uh, online self as much as everyone else is. You know, <laughs> not to show my age, but I was around when the Atari 2600 came out. So, 
which we saw one today for with, with <laughs> multiple games and, and like eight different controllers. Oh, like the new one and... where it's all like built in? No, or... no, no, no. It's it's like a pack. Oh no, it was an original. It was an original. Oh wow, Hard, hardwood and all. <laughs> I think I, I think I got one. Of, well, not, probably not the hardwood one, but I got one of those in a drawer over there. I'll tell That's you what, they're like the Fresh Paint app, which is the first app they showed off online mm-hmm. or on in their advertisement. I, I've handed the tablets to kids mm-hmm. with Fresh Paint loaded up and they go nuts that is like good yes they do that, that app if, if anyone could learn anything from microsoft and i think microsoft built that app i think mm-hmm. it's their app so okay so the, the question I, I think the question because it might might I, i've kind of held to uh i think microsoft or windows 8 makes sense i think the surface is great i think the tablets using it are, are a great idea i think they're getting there um, and leaps and strides. Obviously, they need more apps in the ecosystem, uh, like we discussed. Um, but I don't see these making sense on a desktop, especially a desktop or laptop that doesn't have touchscreen. Do you agree? As people, amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. I mean, why bother, right? Right. So, so if you're if going, you don't have touch. Don't install Windows Eight. Period. Yeah. And that's the problem, I think, because so many, as far as upgrade paths, we're talking about businesses. Uh, but again, you know, those are just what they're just going to launch straight into desktop and it's just going to be the new operating system on the back end. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not what they're trying to sell. You know, that that's I think that's where you have a little bit of a departure going on. Um, and I think most of the people that have a problem with Windows 8 and say, this isn't my Windows. You know, I think XP to Vista, XP to 7. 98 to, to 7 you have mm-hmm. i have the thing down here i push it i look for my application and everything's more or less in the same place uh, i i as you know i'm a person that was i'm the family tech support and i built machines and i've done some pretty crazy stuff over the years with machines but i sat down with as i've explained here on the show i explained i sat down with a windows 8 laptop i have no idea where anything is you know things have changed that drastically and i think there's a little bit of a departure there um but as long as you're pushing more people towards these Surface devices to these, th- this instead of an iPad kind of kind of mentality, I think Microsoft will win in that. Because you don't really talk about like I mean the PCs are dying. So when is a kind of when is a PC not a PC? Well, that's that's something we're, we're kind of debating at work in, in the mobility world. Are we gonna? Does the Surface go with the tablets? Or does the is, surface, or is that what you give them instead of a laptop? Or, right, or where, where within at the enterprise is Surface going to fall? Yeah, the Pro line because we're we're really only looking of at course. Pro, of course. But is it is the mobility groups going to handle that, or is that going to be the Windows architecture and desktop groups? <laughs> the mobility team saying we don't want it. <laughs> it's a Windows device. It's hey, it's, no. it's it's Windows. And we already have architecture and design for Windows. Yeah. The tablet world, whether you like it or not, is more phone and tablet. And it's it's more it was a group that was spun up because the Windows team said, we don't want those Mac devices and we don't want Android. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to have to we're going to have to spin up a team to handle that. And that's what you guys are going to handle. Okay. now you're seeing this convergence like where where does the device fall? And I think that's something that they're they're having a hard time marketing. Mm-hmm. I think they need to somehow show quit trying to compare it to an iPad that doesn't have an SD card slot and show me. I pick up my device in the morning and I'm walking from getting dressed downstairs, grabbing my cup of coffee, reading the newspaper. I throw it in my bag. I'm now at work. I throw it in that dock. Mm-hmm. I work. I go to a meeting. I pick it back up. I'm in one note taking a note. Here, Microsoft here, if you want to hire me for your marketing campaign. <laughs> and then I go back to my desk. I wrap my day. I take the device up. I launch Get Kindle taken. on the train. And then I'm back home again playing a video game. Playing a video game, watching Netflix, you know, the stuff you think of out on tablet. You know, you right. gotta you gotta go back and forth with that. But, it's a, but it's, it is it is the device for all that kind of stuff. I think it replaces hey, there was a, a minute where we were thinking about that instead of a laptop for my wife. Yeah. She's gone MacBook Air 
all the way now. But um, but still, I, it, it was there was there was a glimmer of hope for that. Um, it replacing both the iPad and the and the laptop in the next you know go around here for technology, right? Um, but I and I, I think that does solve this problem for a lot of people. You know, especially those pros. <clears throat> the tough um, the tough time I'm having with it just to, and this is a, probably a personal thing. The and and maybe I don't know what you think because I, I think the aspect ratio is the same on the Nexus. It's that yeah, that super wide thing. It's kind of hard to get used to for it, me. For me, like a Kindle book in that in that form factor, it, it's to the point where I mean, if you're using your device and and it, well, so Ron, I mean, what do you think about using the Kindle app? Do you use it? flip to the side with two pages open or do you use it up and down and this i usually use it up and down do you, do you use it up and down mm -hmm. so like the page doesn't to me my brain says why is does it look like this? i have a i have an issue where and maybe this is the app that i'm using but in the marvel unlimited and i've showed this um it doesn't fill the entire page mm -hmm. it's plenty readable but it's just kind of a pain in the butt you know so and then going sideways, you can read it fine, but you know, but then it like defaults back in. But I think this is more the application right. design than anything else. But that that's the most of the reading kind of issue I have here. Or is it going to be one of those things where I mean, I remember going from a uh, square monitor to, to a sixteen by nine monitor or whatever exactly. at work. And it took me a while getting used to looking at a web page mm -hmm. because and you had space you on had space on left and right, and you're used you used to be used to like a ten twenty four by seven sixty eight, mm -hmm. and now you're going whatever it is. I keep going to kids. Like, they have, like, have wide like kind of bigger <clears throat> probably, probably the size of this iMac here, like the twenty one inch mm -hmm. size, and they're like designing the pages to that size. It's like <laughs> you realize I'm probably going to be viewing this on a fifteen inch uh, MacBook, right? <laughs> They're like, what does that mean? I was like, it means it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that whole idea. Um, but, yeah. I, yeah, I'm a little weird about the widescreen thing. I mean, it's great when you're watching video. I'm, I'm getting used to the, on the iPhone. But reading comics on the iPhone is actually a lot easier now. <laughs> I, it's amazing. The, 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 the bigger screen. Like, like it, I have so much room on that screen. I pick this up less now. You know? But, that, I mean, that is the one thing. I guess I look at it as... In a way, the screen is bigger than the iPad, so I could I have more screen real estate. I'm just not used to. I guess I look at the, the iPad as more of a. It's about the size of a piece of paper. Yeah. And this is bigger. Yeah. Which you would think I should process. Hold those up next to each other so we can kind of see that that difference. Like, for us on this? video at least, <laughs> more like more like this. Like if you could. So yeah, if they're up I and know down, it's the pro. It's heavy. Well, because no, it's so, it's not that it's heavy. It's it's weird because, and I'm trying to make sure the mic can pick me up. Um, I I hold my iPad like this. Yeah. I hold my surface. Like you don't this. even think to go sideways on that. I don't. It's unless not, you're reading a book, like yeah. a Kindle, like you were saying. Like I I find it be, and and maybe it's because I'm used to having a laptop or having a computer screen in front of me. And that's where the computer in this really comes out versus the tablet. Yeah. Whereas I need to get more in the habit of flipping the device like this without the keyboard showing up mm -hmm. um, and using it. And, and they're, they're, I think they're making some changes in eight one to make that this format is not as usable yeah. in a lot of apps. Yeah. Um, they're really trying to take that a step forward. I really wish, I, and this is kind of along the same lines, I wish my iPhone had more apps that went sideways. I wish the iPhone would oh. go, the the, U, the main home screen would go mm -hmm. sideways like the iPad does. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I, I, it just, it seems like it makes, especially with the wider screen, it mm -hmm. seems like it makes more sense sometimes. So, anyways, great talk. I think we Microsoft the hell out of this show. But I, I, you know, I, I, and I go back. It's exciting stuff with Surface. We got there. You go. Getting applause. We made it happen. Made it happen. So we're gonna have to make sure we cycle this through. We'll have the Google Show. We'll have the Apple Show. We'll have the Microsoft Show. Are we leaving anybody out? We got. Well, Facebook I think there could show. be an interesting like face-off towards. I'm guessing either October, or November, because you're gonna have Microsoft coming out with a slew of devices. Apple's going to probably come out with another iPad and new desktop OS. Mm -hmm. There's already rumblings of Android KitKat. Yeah. I, I think there could be... We, we could have like a holiday wrestling mayhem 
no holds bar cage match. Like a tablet off. <laughs> Are we gonna have a tablet off? Is that what's happening here? It could be is a that ta- where, Merry Christmas is a tablet off? Um it, or a te- just a technology. We should do a holiday buying guide, is what we should do. <laughs> if you're if you're if you have this, this, and this, and this is the ecosystem. We all you're come in. in here, we bring our devices, you know, because it'll be amongst like the, you know, ten people that cycle through the show. I think we have everything that's hot right now. Um so you know, it's just like, well, this is this is why I like it. But uh, here's we're holding it up next to an iPad, next to an X7, next to a Google Glass, you know, what, whatever. Um, yeah, we can have some fun with that. You notice he didn't say a Windows product right there. I'm just saying. <laughs> not right, no, no, it's not off the right, right, right off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I, and to to validate my, I'm not completely out out for the Microsoft. As much as I say great things about the Surface, um, um, I want to let you know that you're coming to us from a windows xp machine nice <laughs> hey it's so Very it's still nice. out there and kicking it's still kicking and, man well i think i they were saying today that yeah it's not gonna get updates soon <laughs> well, i don't care as long as it boots up and it can run google hangout i'm, I'm all i'm all good i'm all good if, if that stops we'll just go to linux but there is a stat out there showing that um that there's been a swing because obviously I, I think people are people are getting nervous that their XP machines are no longer going to get patches, etc. Windows Seven is back. To <laughs> or out- all those machines are finally breaking down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Windows Seven is back to outpacing Windows Eight, which means people are moving from XP and upgrading, and they're upgrading to Seven. Because I don't think there's devices. I still... think that could be an enterprise thing too. I, I that's what I think too. I think it's the enterprise affecting that. Yeah, so I think that's like... more enterprise than it is users. But I because the enterprise isn't ready for Windows eight. No. But but that's just good. But what what that really means is that enterprises are upgrading XP machines. Seven is being installed more. There's more people upgrading old equipment. With Windows 7, there and there are people buying new hardware. But how many people bought new equipment several years ago still running XP? Because they yeah, that's allowed true. the choice. There you go. But the Vista era, mm-hmm. right? All right, guys, we do have to get out of here. We're going into the game show. Uh, I'm glad we didn't get into SteamOS since we were going to probably <laughs> talk about it there since the final announcements came out. But um, uh, so, hey, awesomecast.com. Thanks, uh, Crazy Kraus with the Ks. I'm on the wrong thing, Ron. Cross, thanks for joining us. Yep. Bring thanks for having me. Microsoft Enlightenment at Chilla on Twitter for John Chilla. What's up? He likes all the devices. I, I try to be agnostic. There you go. When there I can. Go. And I'm, of course, uh, at Sorgatron. Sorgatron.com. I got videos up, some Google Glass stuff from later. Uh, Google Glass on a Segway! <laughs> I did see that. That the, was pretty the cool. The perfect melding of technologies that nobody's going to use. Um, and and my grandfather, my 80... I, 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 it's just out there. The Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I'm kind of leaning more towards people are going to end up with more watches than something on their face. You know what I mean? But I, mm, it's a toss-up. I still... I, I know. I think I think something's going to happen. But that's a whole other debate. Maybe we'll talk about it at Puck Camp. Um, I won't be there. Well, maybe... Well, then you can watch the stream <laughs> on your phone. Um... Crap, I forget where I was going to go with that. Sorgatron.com, 86-year-old grandfather, also checking it out for the first time. He wore it on his face for a half an hour. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.